it was the ultimate up and down road trip for the green and gold. Three wins in Detroit led to a clean sweep of the Tigers. But in Boston, the Green Monster and the Red Sox got the best of the A's, including a devastating loss on Sunday as the Sox rallied in the bottom of the eighth and the A's were swept in Beantown. Tonight, Bob Melvin and the boys return home, but they will have their work cut out for them as they face the red-hot Texas Rangers, a team that has emerged as a contender in the AL West. They're on a roll. The good news for the A's is that Ace Sunny Gray is on the hill. Sunny and the A's take on the Rangers next. three games and they will be against the red hot texas rangers so the a's and the rangers first of three coming up on comcast sportsnet california good evening everybody welcome to oakland a's baseball along with ray fossey i'm glenn kuyper texas rangers are in town and they're hot and ray you look back to last year this team lost 95 games and early on this year it did not look like it was getting a whole lot better but it has for the rangers and for jeff bannister first year manager how about a 7 and 14 month of april he's got to be thinking what is going on spent all my career in pittsburgh but then they started to score runs in the month of april they did not in the month of may 19 wins for this ball club they've turned it around they've done a great job how about Prince Fielder? He agreed to be the designated hitter so Mitch Moreland could play first. They've won six consecutive series. They are doing everything. A lot of confidence. Just three games behind the Houston Astros starting play tonight. All right, it'll be Nick Martinez and Sonny Gray. That's your pitching matchup. Sonny Gray pitching like yeah. an ace, Ray. And Nick Martinez has probably been the best pitcher yeah. for the Rangers this year. Well, Sonny Gray going back to 162 last year. Shut out the Rangers. Nine innings. This year is yet to give up a run. He's been outstanding. You're looking for a stopper. And, of course, Sonny Gray is that type of pitcher. Nick Martinez. Martinez also has pitched very well against the Athletics. And for a Rangers ball club, having any of their pitchers on the mound, they have to feel pretty confident. But I think the A's are very confident with Sonny Gray, their ace, on the mound tonight. And let's hope the A's can bounce back from that right. tough weekend in Boston. So third series of the year between the Oakland A's and the Texas Rangers. When we come back to the O.co, we'll have lineup for, lineups and first pitch on a beautiful night for baseball. Stick around. A's Rangers coming up.
Mega Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-time automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Sonny Gray and the A's are ready to roll for game one of this three-game series with... An AL West rival in town, the Texas Rangers. So A's Rangers first of three game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. 65 degrees with just a very light breeze. So after very hot weather in the Bay Area yesterday, it's cooled off nicely today. And it is good night for baseball here at the Coliseum. So the Texas Rangers in town, they're playing, well, quite frankly, as well as anybody in baseball. And that stretches out for a period of time now. This is the lineup for Texas. Delano DeShields is doing a nice job in left field. Shin Su Chu is in right. Prince Fielder's the DH, big season for him. Mitch Moreland's in the cleanup spot at first. Joey Gallo, a rookie. Looking forward to seeing him. He's the third baseman. Elvis Anderson short. Leonis Martinez in center field. Robinson Trinos is the catcher. And Hanser Alberto, another rookie, is the second baseman for the Rangers. And Sonny Gray will try to continue to his dominance of the Texas Rangers. And again, going back to game 162 last year, the A's had to have to advance to the play-in game against the Royals. He shut them out. He's had the opening night start against the Rangers. Shut them out. Eight innings and scared everybody because he tried to pitch a no-hitter and then gave up a hit in the eighth and then another start against them in Arlington, Texas. He's yet to give up a run, so he's pitched well looking for win number eight with that 165 earned run average. The defense for the A's tonight behind Sonny Gray looks like this. Zobrist in left, Burns in center, Reddick in right, Laurie at third, Simeon at short, Sogard at second, Canna at first, Stephen Vogt is your catcher. So Delino DeShield steps in, and we are set for baseball. The Rangers and the Athletics. A's home after the 3-3 three three trip, winning three in Detroit, losing three in Boston. So just when you thought maybe the A's were going to grab a little momentum, that weekend in Boston did not go well. We'll try to get something going here at home, and it's just these three games and then it's back out on the road. Jim Wolf calls balls and strikes. Adrian Johnson at first. Crew Chief Bill Miller at second. And Doug Eddings is at third. 1-0 pitch in the first strike. Well, since we last saw the Rangers, a different lineup, especially even in the way they're positioned in the lineup. Jeff Bannister, first-year manager. After a struggle at the beginning, they're playing very well. Yeah, whatever changes that have been made have certainly worked. First year manager, Jeff Bannister. There's the record in May or since May 4th. He's a Texan and he's gone home and he couldn't be more pleased. As he said, I pinch myself every day. Just can't believe it has happened. Fastball, 95 miles an hour into shield strikes out. See the movement? And I asked Stephen Vogt about the movement. He said, it looks like it's going to be a four seamer and See the ball take Back off, the and that's what a hitter has to right deal here. with, especially that velocity with movement makes it even more difficult to make a solid contact, and the Shields could not. He's going back, what was that? <laughs> kind of look on his face saying, wow, <laughs> what was that? So here's Shinsu Chu with Prince Fielder to follow. Chu, 241, eight home runs, 29 RBIs. little scoreless streak against the Rangers for Sonny Gray. In fact, it's not little. It's 24 innings. So that shutout on the last game of the season, part of that 24 inning scoreless streak against Texas. Curveball and a swing and a miss. So the count one and two. The Rangers are 30 and 27 at the start of tonight's action. They're three games out in the AL West. They've been a terrific road team this year. They're 19 and 12. That's the best road record in the major leagues. How about that. Yeah, and especially uh, not playing as well at home. And how about that? 11 and 15 at home. 
but yet 19 wins on the road. That's exceptional. Shoot bounces one, and it's somehow going to get into center field. Sogard dove for it, and Sogard's hurt. The glove came off Sogard on his dive, and he stayed down for a little bit. Third position, now he's up. It looks four, like he's maybe holding Prince, that glove hand. Sometimes that hand gets rolled up underneath yes. when you dive. Let's see what happened. Well, he definitely left his feet and he had his body fall on the left hand. And so as he went for the dive there, hand, oof, ow. Yeah, that's why the glove left the hand. And oh, and you, you put your body weight on your hand. That That is, you feel it. Watch the left hand, watch the body then as he rolled there and wow. That could be wrist, thumb, fingers, could have been a lot of different things. And well, he's gonna stay in the game, so that's good news. Here's Prince Fielder. Bounce toward short. Simeon to his right. Out at second. And yes, they did get the out. Sogard was Playing quite a ways away from second base, so he had a long ways to come. That's and that's a nice play. And well, Simeon's really thrown to a, a, an empty bag. Well, look where Sogard is playing. That's the problem. And then Simeon going there, having to really throw to the bag. And that is definitely not easy. And Sogard, a good job reaching back across the right. That's called, wow, bare hand on top of it. And he did hit the bag yeah. with his foot. Jeff Bannister actually is having it reviewed or at least looked at, but. He laid on top of the bag after catching the ball with the bare hand, and they're going to say, let's stay. And Simeon, boy, he's throwing actually through behind him. And so, yes, the hand on the bag, bare hand. You know, his hand was hurt left, so he didn't want to use it. So he decided to go bare hand. That was a heck of a play. Exmo brought you back Cash Creek Casino Resort. So a fielder's choice. Boy, I just knew the, where, the positioning of Sogard. He had to play there because of Prince Fielder. But you just had a feeling the ball was going to be hit the way it was. This fielder has been known to go to the opposite field. Just as much power probably to left field for Prince Fielder as right. So Mitch Moreland hitting in the cleanup spot. And he's off to a good start. 307, six home runs, 21 RBIs. You know, there's, there are some guys that can DH. And there are some guys that would prefer to play defense. I think of Edgar Martinez, one of the best. Of course, David Ortiz, we just saw in Boston. These are excellent hitters. They're designated hitters, but more than evidently is the type of player who want to play first. Prince Field is an outstanding first baseman. But he just kind of unselfishly said, hey, I'll DH, take off my batting gloves, don't have to worry about it. And things have changed for him as he is having a fantastic season. And that man's happy. Jeff Bannister, his manager. And for Moreland, he was on the disabled. He had a little elbow surgery. Some bone chips taken out. So he is back healthy. And he's always enjoyed hitting here at the yeah. Coliseum. Mitch Moreland. Two and two the count. That's the man of the hour, Joey Gallo, in the on-deck circle. Heard a lot about him. So two and two with Prince Fielder at first. One rolled over foul down the first baseline. He's with the gold tops on tonight. I think Sonny's pretty smart. He wanted to wear the gold tops to match his gold stirrup socks. You know, they, there they are. So, I mean, that, that's, that's color coordinated. Probably modeling agency, probably looking at it. So. Looking good. Twin. And there's nasty pitch there. Thanks, so Scott. Those strikeouts for <laughs> Sonny Gray in the first inning. Eric Sogard's okay, and we're glad about that. No score after a half an inning.
Eric Sogard is okay. Here's the lineup for the A's tonight. Burns, Reddick, Zobrist, Vogt, Butler, Lori, Hanna, Sogard, and Simeon. And Nick Martinez, good numbers against the Athletics and on the season, very good numbers as well. Four and two with a 289 earn run average. Fastball, a couple of different fastballs, curveball slider changeup going back to one of his first starts, if not the first start that he had in his career against the Athletics and thought he was Cy Young. The way he pitched against the A's, pitched very well, and he's continued to do so. Nick Martinez kicks first pitch to Burns is hit in the air to left center and that's hit well Martin on the move he's going to get there and he makes the catch so Leonis Martin tracks it down in left center field. Let's look at the rest of the Rangers defense you see Martin in center he's flanked by the shields and left and Chu and right so pretty good outfield for the Rangers Gallo Andres Alberto and Moreland on the infield and Robinson Chirinos is your catcher. So one away, and here's Reddick. Reddick hitting in the two spot tonight. Reddick was four for ten in that series at Fenway Park over the weekend. Overall, the tenth best batting average in the American League at 305. And a strike called outside corner, and it's 0-2. A's are 23 and 36, so game number 60 for the Athletics. This one's hit high and foul. A's are 9 and 17 at home. So, Ray, the A's have played the most road games in all of Major League Baseball, and we're going to be home for three and then back out on the road for five. But in the state of California, a lot this month of June, which is good. Yeah. So was was I alone Ray or did that flight from Boston seem like it was about 11 hours. Uh, I, I think it was pretty close to that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we were ever going to well, especially since it when it started to bounce about halfway it started bouncing all over the place and turbulence. And look out it's clear skies but turbulence at 35,000 I guess there's too much turbulence in the eighth inning that's what well, maybe that's, that that's it probably it. Trip it, so. it continued on yeah. the flight. Reddick. Anders on the backhand, straightens up, throws just in time, two outs. So there was a little shift on, so Anders had to take a couple steps to his right for the backhand. So two outs here in the bottom of the first for Ben Zobis. Hayes are four and three against the Rangers this year. Remember, they split the opening series of the season, a four game series right here at the Coliseum. And then the A's. Early May went to Texas and took two out of three. One of the best comebacks of the year occurred in Arlington, Texas. Seven run seventh inning. Eighth inning, I guess. Was it then? the eighth inning. Because Nadalek at least came in and tried to get a five out save. But a big win nonetheless, but that's kind of the beginning of when the Rangers started to play well after yeah. the A's left town. Rangers the last two years here in Oakland have played extremely well. Two out is over is a strike. Well you mentioned that Ray when, when when the Rangers lost to the A's on May 3rd. That was the final game of that series. The Rangers were 8 and 16 and they were reeling. Yeah. Since then they have gone 22 and 11. So when we saw them last they were at a low point. Three and one now to Zobers, but well, they have really played well, winning 22 out of their last 33. So there it is. After that game on May 3rd, they had the second worst record in the major leagues. And I cannot say that saw that coming. They did not yep. look good when we saw. Them. Well, there's a word called adversity, yeah. and they had it from the beginning. And for a different reason, Joey Gallo, of course, up with Adrian Beltre on the disabled list. But the Twins dealt with adversity when their star pitcher had to serve a suspension. Yeah. For the Texas Rangers, you Darvish had to miss the season because of Tommy John surgery. So a little bit of different, but they handled it well and probably turned it around as reason because their manager, Jeff Bannister, pretty much said, hey, nobody's going to cry for us. And he said, you look around baseball, there are teams that have injuries and nobody's going to feel sorry. 
And you just have to suck it up and say, basically, we're going to be the team we expected to be. Play. Couldn't be any worse than last year when they had so many injuries. And they definitely played a lot better this year. Bounced over the mound. The second baseman, Alberto, has it. The throw to first just in time to get Zobers. Side retired. So three up, three down inning for Nick Martinez. No score after one. Save Mart 350. And Jeff Gordon's final race is June 26th through the 28th at Sonoma Raceway. Visit racesonoma.com for tickets. No score, top of the second inning between the A's and the Rangers. As Joey Gallo steps in. Joey Gallo, big power hitter who. I said earlier looking forward to seeing him play only because read about him for about three years now and how the Rangers had this young man in the minor leagues who had unbelievable power and he is now in the big leagues Joey Gallo strikes out a lot and can hit a ball a long ways and he hits a shot right to Sogar who grabs it and that's out number one. All right, time now for the T-Mobile Game Changer. It has to do with Joey Gallo on June 2nd of this year, not long ago, made his major league debut and his first at bat, a two-run single. Second at bat, a two-run homer into the upper deck. And then his third at bat, he doubled. All in his first big league game. He ended up going three for four with four RBIs. He set a franchise record for an MLB debut with the four RBIs. He also walked. And he got a standing ovation after striking out with the bases loaded. So that was a good night for Joey Gallo. And of course, he's playing in place of Adrian Beltre, who is on the disabled list. The Rangers, even with how well they're playing, are still dealing with that disabled list thing. An injured thumb for Adrian Beltre. And you know, as we talked on the road, seeing Beltre at the top step as Gallo hit the home run, welcoming him in and I mentioned that to Adrian Beltre and he said you know when I first came up the Dodgers I had help people were helping me and he said I learned in my career that you help players if you're helped yourself that's part of the game and he said if he's going to make us better and win I'm going to do it. And this is Beltre injuring his left thumb went into second base and right there his left thumb hit the bag and that caused him to have to go on the disabled list and that's a gold glove third baseman. He's on the DL but Gallo came up fantastic first night and. And you see that where players. Thinking of Houston Street when Mark Kotze was here and Houston was a, a rookie. Kotze. 
and Kendall took him out and bought suits. Yep. You know, and so what did Houston Street do last year? Same thing, the rookies of the Angels. And same for Adrian Beltre with Joy Gallo, helping him, whatever he can do. And then you know, the thing is, he said, and it's all true, you want to win. And if Kai can help you win, you're going to do whatever you can. Leonis Martin slaps a single. Well, we've been we've been showing the DL list for the Rangers for yeah. a year and a half now, and this is the way it looks currently. Don't forget about Josh Hamilton. Right. Josh Hamilton, Hamilton only played in seven games, and he's on the That's disabled right. list. So Hamilton and Beltre and Profar out for the year, but then look at the pitchers. Darvish, Feliz, Perez, Harrison, Holland. Yeah, Holland, I mean, you got four yeah. starters there. That's right. I mean, those, those are four pretty good pitchers. Darvish, of course, out for the year, but Holland, Harrison, Perez, Feliz, they will all come back yeah. at some point this year. Well, Holland, they learned from Profar when last year they tried to, or at least tried to rush back, and so they're taking their time with Holland. Harrison's on a rehab assignment. They'll get him back. Feliz, they're making sure he's okay before he comes back, and you know, if you've dealt with injuries as a team, you're not going to rush anybody back because if you have reoccurrences because of trying to hurry to get somebody back, it ended up costing more time, and that kind of happened with Profar, Jerks, and Profar, who started out well but has not played much since. Yeah, the get, Rangers have to be thrilled with where they're at yeah. with all the injuries they've dealt with again the first two and a half months of this year. They've won seven out of nine and 14 out of their last 18 to get to three games over 500. Two a pitch is chopped toward Laurie. He waits for the big hop, throws in time, side retired. So a hit and a runner left. Bottom of the second coming up. Would it be Vote Butler and Laurie? No score. At athletics.com voting is exclusively online and available on your computer tablet and smartphone vote up to 35 times at athletics.com that means vote early and vote often Joe Joe do it all vote for vote vote for vote just take the T out put a something else I believe the T there take the E out yeah. put a G there make it silent make it sounds like vote so Stephen vote He's happy to be back because all those fans still believe in Stephen Boat, and we do too. Boat hitting on the cleanup spot tonight. He has crushed the Rangers this year. In seven games, he's seven for 17 with three homers and eight RBI. So they call him when he was in a hot streak. One and one to count. Boat will be followed by Butler and Laurel. 
Finally got Claudio, maybe to the point that the left hander was sent back down to the minor leagues because Stephen Vogt, one of the four lefties, Claudio, that Stephen Vogt stayed in the game and handled nicely. That was it, Arlington? See a lot of change ups and seeing those swings from Stephen Volk because the change ups are pretty good. This one from Martinez and velocity for that uh, change up is not drastic with regard to 12 to 15 miles per hour, but it comes out of his hand looking like the fastball. Two two pitch. There was the fastball just a bit outside, so full count to Volk. On the right shoulder of Jim Wolf scared me initially because it moved. On the right shoulder of an umpire starts to move and it starts to automatic. That one hit well to left field, but the shield goes back and he reaches up, makes the catch. One out. We had a no hitter in Major League Baseball tonight, and it was by a rookie, Chris Heston from the Giants. No hit the Mets in New York by a final score of five to nothing. There's the breakdown 110 pitches, no walks, 11 strikeouts, he hit three batters. But did not walk anybody. And there was your five nothing final. And I think I saw no. It was the first no hitter by a rookie since Clay Buckholz in 2007. So Heston, Boston, a, that's a right. rookie right hander, shuts out the Mets. How about that? Same Buckholz we saw Sunday, who Hayes had a chance to beat him, scored four runs off him, but unfortunately, no decision. There are some pitchers that get a three ball count. They don't like walk, so they just hit a guy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hit him early and then get a double play ball, which I think he did a couple times tonight. Two and one to Butler hitting 253 with four home runs, 28 RBIs for country breakfast. The non breaking curveball, and it was a big curveball that didn't break. Just past the head of Billy Butler. Check the helmet, make sure it's still working well. Slider away. Now three and one. One thing we remembered about Chirinos uh, when caught against the Athletics last year, he shut down the running game. What a great job behind the plate, throwing out base runners. Quick feet, strong arm, very accurate. Not that Billy Butler, if he gets on, is going to attempt to steal. He's come in fourth in the league in run scored. They've scored 248 on the season. And a good at bat takes low. So the first base runner for the A's is a one out walk to Bump. And that'll bring up Lori. Batting in sixth position, third baseman, number 15, Rex Lori. But I think we have seen and remembering what Ed Lynch, longtime scout in Toronto, and he said if Brett Laurie can stay healthy at 550, 600 plate appearances, he'll have a fantastic season. We have seen him had to miss three games because of back issue and missed another one in Boston, and of course getting some time off. I just hope he can stay healthy and hope that his back and he can keep stretching and moving around as much as he does at third base to keep it loose and Keep him in the lineup because he is an aggressive player, handles the third base position very well. And swing the bat, five home runs on the season. Good swing there, fouls it back. And backs are always scary. Yep. And you can say, well, you know what? I mean, if, if a non athlete has a bad back, I mean, you can strengthen it and, you know, try to tighten yourself up a little bit. But Laurie's about as tight as you're going to get, and oh. I say that. I mean, he's, he's muscular. He's yeah. in good shape. So you always worry about the back a little bit. Sinker, and that's a strike. Could have been a little low, one and two. Not surprisingly, Martinez going a little bit of a slide step with Billy Butler first, who is absolutely zero threat to run. And you get that pitch. Kendall Graveman would have loved to have gotten that pitch on Sunday. Sinker brought a no hitter. Basketball high. Canada follow. 
Laurie against the Rangers this year is 10 for 29. Biggest hit of the season, the high fastball hit down the right field line against Naftali Feliz in that game we referenced. Chase that one, and that's the first strikeout for Martinez. Two outs here in the bottom of the second. All right, you try to recognize the spin of the breaking ball. Look what Chirino has set up. It starts out there and just keeps moving off the plate, almost trying to get Laurie to offer at a pitch that really was not going to be a strike, especially with the movement and the break on the pitch. And He's predominantly a fastball pitcher, two and four seam fastball. A slider, which he just threw, so that's a lot of pitches just between the two and four seam fastball and the slider. Well, and we've seen it tonight already. I mean, he's he's got a good two seam fastball, a lot of sink. Canna, 245, seven home runs, 23 RBIs. Canna had that big opening homestand for the A's, the first homestand of the year, first yeah. seven games of the year, and Canna got to play in those early games, and he had a great week, opening week. Taiwan Walker, first major league home run yep. against the young Seattle pitcher when the Mariners followed the Rangers in for that first week of the regular season. And that one hit toward third, scooped up by Gallo. Throws to second side retired runner left and we're headed to the third no score A's and the Rangers. California is brought to you by Real Strong Redwood. Why Redwood? Visit realstrongredwood.com. No score, third inning. Sonny Gray back to work. Gray's given up a couple of hits. He's got a couple of strikeouts. And he faces Hanser Alberto, new second baseman for the Rangers. Brought up on the 28th of May from AAA Round Rock. Thought they were going to be taken care of in center field with Ognet Odor, who had such a fine season last year, but Odor struggled so much he went back to the minor league. All right, here's our Ford Wright choice Sonny Gray against the Rangers last year. And again, six times he faced the Rangers last year, and this is the third time he's facing them this year. So, as we've said, Ray, there's no surprises here with the Rangers and Sonny Gray, but he has been terrific against them in his career. Look at that ERA, 1.54. They pitch the shutouts that he has and the consecutive scoreless innings against the, the Rangers, and yeah, it can uh, drop considerably. Leonis Martin was leading off, now it's to Shields. Chu has moved up. Andrus has dropped down. 
Jeff Bannister has made a lot of changes with the lineup and seems to be working. Shields has had a very good season for the Rangers and especially in the leadoff spot. He sort of turned. I mean, he may be the guy who got this thing going to line of the Shields when they dropped him into that leadoff spot. Watch the backswing. Well, it probably hit him on the thumb that he hurt uh, Saturday in Boston. Remember the. That one's hit well the right center. That's trouble and that's going to short hop the wall. The Shields is very fast. He's going to round second and he's going to head to third and he's going to make it with a stand up triple. The line of the Shields much like his father of the same name showing great speed man. He's fast. Well, he knew he didn't hit it hard enough to get out. He's yet to hit a home run. So when you hit a ball and you're not a power hitter, you think of your speed. And once the ball sliced away from Billy Burns and really carry him straight up, he showed his speed immediately. I mean, he was coasting in the third. I mean, that's a, an easy triple on his own, not even hesitating because he plays at a park that is known for triples out in right center. And his dad, of course, was a left-handed hitter. Here's Chu infield in. So Bob Melvin is thinking, you know what? This has got pitchers do written all over it. So the infield comes in in the third inning. But he's also hoping for strikeout number one, but number two would be a ground ball. Chu hit a ground ball in the first inning. First at bat that found its way into center field. Chu bounces that one. Foul. Kicks out in front of home plate. And the Shields just showed exactly the plan going on contact. As he was heading down the line as soon as Chu made contact and hit the ball on the ground. Off his foot. So when you play the infield in you're hoping for a ground ball right at an infield and especially since the Shields now is going to be running on any sort of contact. But Sonny would love to get a strikeout. He has one that was more. He is capable. Get a little bit extra in trying to get the strikeout. Went for the yeah. strikeout, and that's probably the pitch he's got yeah. the best chance to get a strikeout on. A hard slider. Ranger starting lineup, career numbers versus Gray. Not a lot of success. Chu actually has the best success. Now you can tell with the, the hard slider trying to get Chu to chase, which he did in his first at bat, strike two, but ended up getting the base hit. And he got it. So he went with the pitch again, that slider, and Chu strikes out. Well, and that's the key. Throw it hard and get a hitter to commit. And Chu was trying to make contact. First one bounced, handled nicely by Steven Vogt. This one a little bit higher, still thrown hard, and Chu swung through it. That's a big strikeout. That's a huge out. So two outs for Prince Fielder. High fastball fielder swings and misses. Simeon, the shortstop, playing right behind second base. Lori shifted over to his left. Outfield pretty much straight away for Prince Fielder. Going to where Simeon is playing. It's a little scary because Prince Fielder likes to go that direction as he did in the first at bat. Just missed inside. One and one to count. That is Simeon, as in S E M I N, right? Well, that's Simeon. Simeon. We've asked him six, seven, yeah. maybe eight times how to pronounce his name, and he tells us that it's Simeon. And generally, we pronounce it the way the player tells us that's right. to pronounce it. And we have checked with him on, as I said, numerous occasions. Just so everybody knows that. Another excellent block by Stephen Vogt. V O G T. Hard breaking ball again. And Stephen Vogt, good job. And that is again true definition of blocking. Keep the ball in front of you any way you can. And he knows coming into this game that for Sonny Gray, he wants to keep the ball down as much as possible. Shallow left. Zobris coming in. It's going to fall. So Prince Fielder. Loops one in the left, the shield scores, and the Rangers lead one nothing. Well, you have to respect his power by playing deep. 
He's strong, opposite field. And the reason the Rangers are playing so well because they get two out hits and Prince Fielder who is having a, a great season with the shift. Simeon no chance to go out. And for Zobrist in left field, no chance for him to come in quickly enough to get it. So Fielder gets his 41st RBI and here's Borland who hits one high in the air to left. It's hit pretty well but room for Zobrist. Couple steps in front of the warning track. He's got it side retired. So run on two hits for the Rangers, and they lead one nothing as we go to the bottom of the third. Fielder RBI hit, so it'll be Sogard, Simeon, and Burns against Nick Martinez. First pitch is a strike with a fastball from Martinez. Wouldn't say Martinez his stuff, as we like to use that baseball word. It doesn't jump out at you, Ray, but he sinks the ball pretty well and he's generally around the strike zone. Seems to have a pretty good idea of what he's doing out there. Well, change his eyesights, which uh, Mike Maddox, his pitching coach, likes to see that with any pitcher. And Torinos works him well. well. It's the high fastball that only once, and it's a young game, but only once has Martinez tried to pitch up in the zone, has left it down where Reddick in the first inning found the ball back. The one and two to Sogard. Fouled straight back. Well, Martinez. Had a spot in the rotation out of spring training last year. He made 24 starts for the Rangers. And remember, Rangers last year lost 95 games, so his record was not great at 5 and 12. But when hit hard to third, nice play by Gallo. He spins around and throws out Soka. So one out, but so Martinez. A lot of experience last year, even though the numbers were not great, but certainly is helping him this year. He was an 18th round draft pick at, out of Fordham University back in 2011. So with the baseball draft going on, it's always fun to look at where these guys were picked. And for Martinez, an 18th round pick. Probably not a big deal at the time when the Rangers <laughs> grabbed him, but now he's Pitching extremely well. Simeon takes a strike and it's a quick 0-2. And the start last year, April 22nd, was his second major league start. That was against the A's and four runs two earned against the club. Pitched well. He's 24 years old. I have to think like the athletics with AJ Griffin and Jared Park on the disabled list with Tommy John surgery and Graveman and 
Han have had an opportunity to step in the rotation, show they can pitch well. And both have taken kind of run with the, the opportunity. And same for Nick Martinez with all the injured players on pitchers. You mentioned three starting pitchers on the disabled us. So he gets the strikeout. Watch this hard sinker, which just dives down out of the strike zone. It's amazing how pitchers like to throw it in that zone instead of starting it away and bringing it back. Like to go down and in, figure that it looks so good, and then the bottom drops out. Simeon swinging over the pitch. So here's Burns. Burns hit a fly ball to left center field in the first inning. Billy Burns leading all American League rookies in hits coming into tonight's game. We've got 43. And he is he's locked into that leadoff spot for Bob Melvin, and he's done a nice job. On base percentage of 356. That's pretty good. Pitches hit high and foul down the left field line. So two and one the count. Burns also sitting on a 12 game hitting streak. That's a season high for any A's player. Actually, ties a season high. Butler had a 12 gamer. So did Reddick earlier this year. And there's working both sides of the play. So down and in the simulator and then inside of Billy Burns. Foul straight back. So a two and two count remains. Saw the setup by Martinez, and you'll see some pitchers that will have their their glove with the index finger. See the index finger? It's got a sleeve that you can put the finger in. That keeps it. If sometimes a pitcher will move that finger and. Nice play by Mitch Moreland. Hustles to the bag and just beats Burns. So a three up, three down inning for Nick Martinez. And we're headed to the fourth. One nothing, Rangers. California is brought to you by Tahoe South. Join Team Summer at TahoeSouth.com. One nothing Rangers lead. Top of the fourth inning is Joey Gallo steps in. Gallo, Andrus, and Leonis Martin here in the fourth inning. Gallo hit a sharp ground ball to the second baseman. His first at bat. That low strike and Jim Wolf's 
He's given it to everybody. I think the Rangers know that with home runs come strikeouts, and they know they have to be patient with Joey Gallo. Yeah, I mean this 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 power that he has, Ray. I mean it's hard to find. I mean, in 2013 he hit 40 home runs in the minor leagues. In 2014, he hit 42. I mean, guys just don't hit that many home runs in the minor league. So, this thing as hard as he does. He lets <laughs> it rip, boy. <laughs> that one rolled to the right side. Canna picks it up. Shovels to Gray, one out. Fans, you can join Jose Canseco, Dave Henderson, and other former A's players for the 2016 Oakland Athletics Fantasy Camp held from January 15th to the 21st at the A's New Spring Training Facility in Mesa, Arizona. Get out of the stands and onto the field and create lasting memories with former A's grades. For more details, go to www.hendersonbaseball.com or call 509-993-7338. Maybe Jose can work on that one where the ball hits the top of his head. That's right. Did that as a member of the Texas Rangers, as a matter of fact. That was the anniversary just recently. That year old ballpark. Mistake by the lake. It's 0 and 1 to Elvis Andrews. Cleveland lost to Seattle tonight. 3 to 2. Just wonder how many people were at Progressive Field. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot going on there <laughs> in that downtown Cleveland with the Cavs and the Warriors playing and the Indians and the Mariners playing. And Let's see, that was 9 o'clock Cleveland time where the Warriors started yeah. that, right? Yeah, so, so we are starting a little later than the baseball game. Yeah, maybe the Indians just went over, <laughs> had some seats maybe already. You know what? I, I bet they did. Found a way to get in, maybe. But if you've never been to Cleveland, it's the baseball stadium and the basketball arena. It's a little bit like it is here where it's, yeah. it's literally about 40 yards apart. That's right. When we're in Cleveland, Ray, we walked back to the hotel. We walked right along the arena. Quick and Loans Arena. Strike called two and two to Elvis Sanders, who had a fly ball to right field in the second inning. I think the players are trying to determine Jill Wolf's strike zone. Warriors must have scored. I hear the fans. Uh, or did they do more than just score? Simeon waits, throws quickly, and Canna kept his foot on the bag. Two outs. So that'll bring up Leonis Martin, who slapped a single to left field in the second inning. Great play by Marcus Simeon because that was a quick one because of the speed of Andrus, but he had to catch the ball first and then say, okay, I'm going to air it out. He did. Mark Canna with the stretch. Don't stretch too far that the throw up high and really because of the strong throw by Simeon he was able to really have a couple of steps with Andrews down the line. Martin now hitting down in the order with the shields taken over in that leadoff spot. A couple years ago we saw Leonis Martin hit in the ninth spot a lot and then last year kind of took over in that leadoff spot and I remember Ron Washington, the manager at that point, said, you know what, we're going to leave him there. And he did a nice job, but Rangers, at the end of April, tried to figure some things out, move the lineup around a little bit. And that went towards center, just over the head of Simeon, and Jonas Martin has his second hit. I tell you, the, the hits against Sonny Gray tonight have not been the blistering ones. Actually, no, Joey Gallo has hit the ball hard, as hard, in the first out that he made. Chirinos. Prince Fielder actually got a base hit on a much softer hit ball than the one he hit for the force out in the first inning. So it's one of those where you make the pitches, but contact is made, and anything can happen when there is contact. Torinos bounced out to third and the second inning. And that one down around the knees for a strike. Keep an eye on Martin. He's a good base dealer. He's got nine steals this year. He has been thrown out five times, so not a great percentage so far this year. But the Rangers do like to run a little bit. That one. 
missed inside. Not by much. Thing about Sonny Gray, he is quick to the plate. Varies his delivery to the plate, and a very good athlete. The Rangers, as a team, are third in the American League in stolen bases. They have swiped 42 this year. And our team oh, runs, wow. and he. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sonny Gray he just needed to take one more look and he would have picked him off. But he did not look and that allowed really Martin to just go into second without any chance of being thrown out. So that stolen base for Martin maybe the easiest one he's had all year. But well, you will see well guys will do that and all of a sudden the pitcher will step off and get the run down and. Works away from Volk the catcher and Martin will go to third. A sharp breaking ball from Gray, which I would imagine can be tough to block at times. But well, especially if it goes to the side, and this one goes to the side a little bit. Stephen Volk had it hit off the heel of his glove. The couple that he blocked last two innings, one in each of the last two innings, actually both last inning. Chew at the plate, then Prince Field at the plate did a good job, but those were the hard sliders that went kind of straight down. So Stephen was able to block those. Now even more important was the stolen base wild pitch. Now trying to keep anything in front of with this count. There's that breaking ball. Trino just barely got a piece of it. The only run in the game, last inning, Prince Fielder with a two-out bloop single. That scored the Shields, who had tripled. So another 2 2 to Robinson Chirinos. Fastball misses in a full count. Alberto is the on deck hitter. Three two pitch is hit high in the air center field playable for Burns who's under it side retired so the Rangers strand a runner bottom of the fourth coming up Reddick Zobris to vote to hit Rangers leading one nothing. Steven Spielberg returns to executive produce the long-awaited next installment of the Jurassic Park series Jurassic World 
opening in theaters this Friday. So we've reached the bottom of the fourth inning from the Coliseum. One nothing the Rangers lead Reddick Zobrist and vote. Nick Martinez good through the first three innings one walk two strikeouts and he just threw pitch number forty nine. Reddick reaches for it pokes it foul up over top of the A's dugout. Grounded out to the shortstop Andrus in the first inning. Again, left side. This one down the line a little further. Martinez does not take a whole lot of time either. He's to he get it. He's ready to throw it. He learned from Colby Lewis. Lewis right. not pitching in this series, and I think the A's are thankful for that. If you watch another pitcher and have the success that Colby Lewis has had. His veteran status and the leadership, and he will be an observer in this series. And oh, he has had some great numbers against the Athletics. Another former Athletic playing well against his team. This one's popped up foul. Yeah, the pitching matchups for the rest of the series: Jesse Hahn and Giovanni Gallardo tomorrow, and then Scott Casimir and Chichi Gonzalez on Thursday. Two breaking ball and Reddick holds up. So the count two and two. A's still looking for their first hit. Butler, the only base runner, and he walked in the second. Two two pitches lying to the gap. And that's going to roll all the way to the wall. It's picked up by Martin, and the A's have a leadoff double here in the fourth inning. Uh, you want to see a perfect job of hitting and a pitch and hitting it where it is pitched. This is it. Fastball running away. Josh Reddick stayed on the pitch and we've seen more and more instead of going out and trying to pull a ball that's outside. He goes with it and there is your gap all the way to the wall. It was shading him more towards right center and Josh Reddick stayed on it. And what an excellent job of textbook hitting. And the A's for the leadoff double see if they can get him in. Here's Zobrist. First pitch he is a strike in the outside corner. He's had quite a few missed opportunities in Boston over the weekend. I'd say if bases loaded, nobody out, and you don't score. That's, that's a huge missed, missed opportunity that might have been the nail in the coffin that the A's needed for the Red Sox, but it didn't happen, and they came back and won. And we were hoping we wouldn't look at that inning, but had to towards the end. Right now, Ben Zobrist being pitched away, and with a gap on the left side. I did it pull it but might as well take it just like Reddick did they're playing him to pull something from Martinez. He lays off a sinker down and low maybe a change up. So two and one the count is over to ground it out to second and first in. And there's the shift to the right side with the shortstop Anders near second base. Remember opening night first at bat for Ben Zobrist was against these Texas Rangers Gallardo to run home run first at bat first inning. Outside again three and one. Uh, typically this is how you, you try to pitch a hitter. Pitch him away try to get him to hit the opposite way instead of pulling the ball to the right side. Andrus. Right behind Reddick trying to keep him close. Zobris hits one high in the air to right field. Chews back. He's near the wall and he's got just enough room to reach up and make the catch. Plenty deep to allow Reddick to tag up and go to third. Well, whether you fill it with cocoa crisps or a stack of bacon, fans will love the Billy Butler Country Breakfast Bowl. 15,000 fans will pick up the bowl courtesy of Xfinity on Sunday, June the 28th, when the A's play host to the Kansas City Royals, which, by the way, was the team that 
Billy Butler played for. Get your tickets today by calling 877-493-BALL or logging on to athletics.com slash tickets. So Stephen Vogt will try to tie the game, try to get the runner in from third, less than two outs. And good job by Ben Zobras coming close to hitting another two-run home run. So I'm going to make a prediction here, Ray. I think the Rangers are going to pitch very carefully to Stephen Vogt. I think you're probably right. So expand your strike zone. Take the opportunity. And that one hit hard right on the ground to Alberto. And that's out number two. So I was wrong, and unfortunately, Vote hit it hard, but right at the second baseman. So that's the second out. Well, you know Stephen Vote is struggling when he doesn't get that run in from third because he's very good at that. You saw the number of sacrifice flies this year. Well, then you were talking about with the A's having the infield in. Sonny Gray was pitching, and the same with the Rangers. Nick Martinez with a sinking fastball, looking for ground ball, got the ground ball, and Stephen Vogt tried to hit it past the second baseman, couldn't do it. And the A's try to do what the Rangers did, get a two-out hit to tie the game. That was bounced to second, and it's not going to get it done. Alberto has it, and the side is retired. So frustrating inning for the A's. They cannot get Reddick home. After the leadoff double, one nothing after four. Work in the top of the fifth inning. Five hits allowed by Gray so far in the game. It'll be Alberto to shield and shoot. First pitch strikes 11 for 17 for Sonny Gray. Hanser Alberto first pitch is a curveball inside. Count for Sonny Gray sitting at 62. So not too bad. It's hit hard in the left field, the base hit. That one hung up there and hands are Alberto with the leadoff single. So here's our McDonald's true stories for tonight. May 3rd of this year, Sonny Gray gets the win versus the Rangers in Arlington. He becomes the first starting pitcher in ace history. Since 1914, Gray is the second starting pitcher in A's history to record 10 strikeouts and seven walks in a game. Bobby Shantz had 11 strikeouts and seven walks in 14 innings back in May of 1952. And here he faces the leadoff man, Delino DeShields. DeShields with a strikeout and a triple and a run score. Sonny Gray from Vanderbilt and I guess another big draft.
for Van D. Yeah, they, they get a <laughs> number one pick was from there. A couple pitchers went early. About eight shortstops. Yeah, it's amazing. He's took a couple of them early. Fastball is high, so two and zero. Oh. Yeah, it was the and the draft still going on. He's got one more day, but it was the, the shortstops draft here in 2015. Two zero to Delino De Shields. First strike. Well, Sonny Gray made his major league debut against the Pittsburgh Pirates at a time when the now manager of the Rangers, Jeff Bannister, was the bench coach for Clint Hurdle, the Pirates. Sonny came up at the end, actually right before the All-Star break, 13, when. He just wanted to, he wanted to get his feet wet. A couple innings. Yeah. And that was the All-Star break, and Dan Strayler was optioned because he was not going to pitch, so Sonny Gray came up. And probably will never go back to the minor leagues unless it's on a rehab assignment. I think he's here to stay. You think? I think so. <laughs> Say, that's probably, probably a good shot of that happening. So the A's took their first two picks in the draft were shortstops. Richie Martin from Florida was the 20th pick overall. And then in the second round, it was Mikey White, a shortstop from the University of Alabama. How about that? In fact, Richie Martin's going to be playing in the College World Series starting yep. this weekend in Omaha for the Gators. Pretty exciting time. You, some some say they should wait till after the College World Series to have the draft because the players. What was it? Somebody was in a walk off dog pile and realized he was drafted. So don't get hurt. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's teams that are going. Oh. <laughs> So, special time, three day period when draft is going on, foul right at home plate as the runner was off and moving. So, let's check out the shortstop, Richie Martin. In the rain, doesn't seem to bother. And playing in a very, very good college baseball conference, the Southeast Conference. I mean, it is loaded with talent. So, to check him out on Saturday in the College World Series. Good take there by DeShield. So the count three and two. We'll see if Alberto goes now. And he's going on the two two. That was fouled. I'd say it's a pretty good chance with his speed. And he put the emphasis on DeShield to make contact. So maybe a strike about 12 miles. So like Greg get a quick delivery to the plate. I'll need to be another breaking ball. Alberto runs and the pitch is a ball. So the shields with the good at bat he takes the walk. Let's take a look at the top 10 picks in the first round. The first round was yesterday and there you see the shortstops. The first three were shortstops. Two college players then a high school player. And I saw Kyle Tucker. You see Kyle Tucker the fifth pick went to the Astros and we saw his brother Preston Tucker. That's right. At the big league level. So how about Astros, that? Yeah. So the rest of the draft will be tomorrow. Open up the final rounds. Down and in to Shin Su Chu. I'm going back to the Shields, the A's Sonny Gray, Stephen Vogt, hoping that the Shields would do what Chu did his last at bat, and that is swing at a breaking ball down. Shields did not, and with Alberto running, there's some speed on the base. Yeah. With uh, Alberto okay. and his Shields. And Chu bounces it to Sogar, who charges out at second, and that's a double play. Boy, nice turn by the A's. Now Marcus Simeon because of Chu, he can run. Good throw by Sogar. Simeon getting out of the way of the hard slide by the Shields. I mean, you have speed, and you know the guy's coming down on you. That's what the Shields did, but Simeon, a good job getting out of the way and turning. And all you could see the hand, too, and that's the important thing because 
you catch the ball and as you're transferring it, making sure you have a good grip on the baseball to finish the throw and make it be a good throw to the first baseman. So here's Prince Fielder who takes a pitch a bit inside. This was the situation in the third inning. Runner at third, two outs, and Fielder blooped one to left field in front of Zobrist for an RBI hit. Ten home runs in 41 RBIs now for Prince Fielder. Best batting average in the American League. He's really having an MVP season. Yes. Had a tough time at Detroit, Comerica Park, traded for Ian Kinsler. Tough time last year, one of many injured players for the Rangers. This year healthy and having a very good season. He's tied for third now in the American League in RBIs. Got a contract that runs through 2020, so the Rangers are <laughs> have to be thrilled that that injury has not affected them this year. Boat sets up inside, and it's just a bit low, 96 miles an hour from Sunny Green, so three and one the count. And as hot as Prince Fielder is, this is a. Uh, maybe a pitch around pitch carefully trying to get him to hit your pitch and it's more than though a very good hitter against the athletics here in Oakland. The Prince Fielder so strong as it was the case last at bat got jam still hit it deep enough and softly enough to the outfield driving the run and he's going to be aggressive he's there pitcher driving runs and he knows it and it might expand his strike zone because of it. About a hard slider again, like he threw Chu, like he's been throwing. Even down and try to get into chase. Go hard in, hard slider down towards the middle of the plate. And that's hit hard, but right to Simeon, who's playing behind second base. Side retired. So this time, Sonny Gray gets out of it. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Lori to lead it off. One nothing, Texas. Lori Canna Sogard against Nick Martinez. A's had a good opportunity in the fourth. Reddick led off with a double. Zobrist got him to third with one out of the fly ball, but Vote and Butler grounded out, and the A's did not score. So, first pitch to Lori is a breaking ball for a strike. I think if you go. At the end of a season, and did look at how many opportunities you had had with a runner third less than two outs, and how many times you were successful, how many times you've left there. And that's why, of course, they have the percentages of times that that runner is driven in. 
And I think you look at your record and say, I bet it could have been a lot better. So 0 and 2. Lori waits. Pitch inside with that hard sinker. Martinez 65 pitches thrown. Fastball is high. So, and Ray, you mentioned earlier that changes the eye level a little bit. So you saw him go up there. So that would make you believe this next pitch is going to be down. Hard slider probably away that they struck him out on the first at bat. That'll go back in with a fastball. Down and in. So Laurie was behind in the count 0 and 2, and now it's 3 2. And surprisingly, after striking him out with a slider in his first at bat, a pitch that kept running away from him, he has not gone back to the same pitch. That's where Brett has to be patient because he may be getting the slider that he did strike out on. Watch Torino's. And a breaking ball popped up. It's going to be the first baseman, Moreland, who grabs it. So that's out number one here in the fifth inning. Ace Baseball on Comcast Sports Net California is brought to you by Joseph Abood, available at Men's Warehouse. So here's Mark Canna. Canna with that fielder's choice. His first at bat, and he went around, says Adrian Johnson. You be the judge. See the top of the bat, and that's what they go by. Kind of a looping swing at the at the top of the bat. And that hit Canna. So there's Same that. The ball no. running in. Well, Jim Wolf came out quickly, almost indicating that he was swinging, but he definitely was not swinging. He, he took it and he could see his reaction that it's, it's bothering him. But it missed the elbow guard, which is above the elbow, actually, and more. So he's got the elbow guard that actually goes up kind of the tricep, but hit him. Just above the elbow, and then that hurts. Ninth hit batter this year by Martinez. But as much as he pitches in, I'm not surprised, especially with a running fastball inside. First pitch to Sogard outside. So that's the third base runner for the A's in this game. Let's see if they can get a move in that first. Simeon to follow. Gallo, the third baseman, is in even with the grass. Outfield swung toward left center and shallow. So guards first at bat, he bounced out to the third baseman. Pitcher catcher will try to get on the same page. We'll see if they are. So Canna with the lead. And Sogard lifts one high foul over near the A's dugout. A couple rows back. That's a swing up. Here comes a fastball, and you start to swing. Oh, that's a changeup. And it's amazing. The pitch and the difference in the velocity of about 8 to 10 miles per hour. And so he recognized it. Looked like it's going to be a pretty good pitch to drive, and then it's kind of dragging the bat through. Fortunately, did put it in play. That's that's a kind of a, kind of a half swing you hope is a foul ball. That one's hit high in the air to center. 
Martin back. Now he squares up and he grabs it. So two away here in the bottom of the fifth, and that'll bring up Marcus Simeon, who struck out in the third. Two strikeouts so far for Nick Martinez. Simeon was two for nine in that series at Fenway over the weekend. He's getting a home day off yesterday, which is always nice. There's not a lot of those. I'm sure the players enjoyed it. After a six hour flight, I would hope so. Yeah. That's all it was, six. <laughs> I went to the movies twice on that one. Is that running fastball inside one and one the count. Canna inches off Martinez really slowing it down. the type of pitch if you can recognize the spin you know it's not going to be a strike and for Marcus Simeon to recognize that one not swing he has swung at some breaking balls out of the strike zone but the more he gets a chance to hit especially against right handers he's going to get an opportunity to see the breaking balls and recognize them. this one to recognize and pull the trigger just could not front door type of a breaking pitch so now the count even at two and two this kind of starts inside he starts to swing and did not it did not break as much as he thought when he saw the spin of the baseball. Good take there by Simeon. It looked like he had a pretty good look at that off speed pitch. That's all he's saying in the at bat. Yeah, that's true. One fastball down and in, the rest breaking pitches of some sort of slider. So 60% two and four seam fastballs, 23% slider. I think you're going to see one or the other in. Be the sinker down and in that he swung and missed his first at bat or another slider away. Kind of eliminate a lot of possibilities if those are the only two pitches he's throwing. So Canna will go. And the pitch is outside. Good at bat by Simeon and he gets the walk. So two on, two out for Burns. Now the second time through the order and it looked like that Torino's Opted to go more outside to Sam in after it struck him out on a fastball down and in. So Burns will try to tie it up. Outfield comes in a couple steps for Burns. You know, as always, keep an eye on that first pitch. Burns loves to swing at the first pitch. Good idea not to there as it was a changeup that dropped away. Probably start seeing more first yeah. first pitch off speed pitches to yeah, burn. Probably be a pretty good idea if you're the opposing pitcher catcher. You see the scouting report. Just a matter of what time the first pitch is going to be. In that case, it was a two seamer out of the strike zone. Now Mark Cannon get the big jump, big lead off second base because two outs and we saw it in Boston. Not really paying attention to the runner at second with two outs. Burns chops this one. Martinez missed it. And then he flips it and everybody's safe. So Martinez walking around. I don't know if he hurt himself a little bit. Either way, Burns is aboard and the bases are loaded, so the A's catch a big break. You know, if uh, Morton had said on the bag, it might have had him on the rebound because Martinez made a very good play. And Morton coming off, but easy enough play. Had the ball come up on the heel of the glove and then recovered nicely. Flipped the ball to Morton with the speed of Billy Burns. That changed everything. And really, that shot, no chance to get him. And Mike Maddox, a pixie coach, simply just going out after that tough one. 
probably got the two best defenses in baseball playing head to head tonight. <laughs> Air number 52 for the Rangers. The A's have 57. Well, how sweet it would be for Josh Reddick to hit the same ball to left center that he did his last at bat. Because that will clear the bases. So Reddick, a ground out, and then that double. Numbers in his career with the bases loaded, a couple of home runs, so a couple of grand slams. First one against his former team, the Red Sox. So Canna, Simeon, Burns are your runners. Her ball hit on the ground towards second. It's scooped up by Alberto, side retired. So Reddick grounds out with the bases loaded, and the A's do not score. Sixth inning coming up, still 1 0 Rangers. Sonny Gray back to work. So Sonny's pitched well, but trailing one nothing. Moreland, Gallo, and Andrus here in the sixth. All Sonny can do is just try to keep it at a one-run deficit and hope that his club would get the opportunities and they have not taken advantage of opportunities. And the interesting thing that the A's have had a runner at third, less than two outs. The two hitters swung first pitch. Reddick came up with bases loaded, first pitch curveball. He swung at the first pitch to ground down. So Martinez has been able to get ground outs with runners in scoring position. And especially at a time when the A's with one hit in the air or through the infield could have scored the tying run but could not make it happen. 2-0 to Moreland who has struck out and hit a fly ball to left field. Big swing and a miss by Moreland. I think that Moreland has shown in his time playing for the Rangers against the Athletics while the A's are planning to pull the ball on the ground. He has power to all fields. Yep. He is very strong. And that one's belted to center and it's hit a ton. Burns is going to watch this one go and wow. That one hit above the big garage door out there. So a long home run by Moreland to give the Rangers a 2 nothing lead. Well, a high fastball. He just missed the 2 and 0. Came back with another one up in the zone. And didn't miss this one. Got to extend the power for arms. So the fourth home run given up by Sonny Gray. And that was a big one. And when you hit up above the door. Almost in the lower suites. So seventh home run for Moreland. 
So his ninth career home run here in this ballpark since 2010. Only Trout has more. Gallo with a big swing and he fouled it off a vote. Oh, that's a that's a direct hit. That was that spun his neck, spun his head around. Watch this. I don't know how you guys do it, right? Huh? Man, that's brutal. <laughs> oh, just watching that. <laughs> well, at least <laughs> they're concerned about them now. Yeah, that's true. We took the blows and they could care less. Go get them. I mean, that was, and I'm glad they're doing it because concussion symptoms are scary in the first place, and especially for a catcher. To, and yet, I can only think about John Jaso, and we hope. Now batting. That he is okay. Elvis He's battling another Andrews. injury now, but the last two years he took direct shots like Stephen Volt just did, and it affects everybody differently. Sure. And in the case of John Jaso, it, it definitely affected him to the point that he could not catch and probably won't, won't catch again. So Gallo aboard with the base hit, and Elvis Andrus steps in. Andrus has hit a fly ball to right, and he has grounded to short. Lori thinks the same as he's in a step on the grass. Well, the home run by Morton might have changed everything. It's a one-run game. He might just thinking now it's two to nothing. Andrews handles about well. A one, and that's a strike. So 0 and 2 to Elvis Sanders. Leonis Martin is the on deck hitter. Pitch number 87 coming up for Sonny Gray. And a hard breaking ball, and Andrus waves at it. And that is strikeout number four for Gray. Pitch that likes to throw, and why not? This is so hard, it's thrown. And again, it's more of a slider, not the curveball. The curveball is. Unfortunately, sometimes thrown slower, slower, but that slider throwing as hard as he does, it's, it's such a tempting pitch to swing at, and most times it's out of the strike zone. So with one out, Martin steps in. He has got a couple of singles tonight, and also a stolen base. Eight hits now for the Rangers, just one hit for the Athletics. Yeah, well, not a real big lead at first. So his uh, birthplace, Henderson, Nevada. Yeah. It's a few guys that have come out of Nevada, like Bryce Harper. That's right. Ken Korak. Ken Korak's from yeah, Henderson. Lives right. there, anyways. Well, he, yeah, he lives there. He was born in Southern California. I believe he was, yeah. yes. He enjoy probably time. I mean, you know, everybody from Henderson. I mean, they come out of there. It's right. Bryce Stars Harper's come out of Henderson. Bryce Harper's had a good career. He had another home run. <laughs> He's got 20 home runs. <laughs> and that one's hit hard, just foul. Hector Ortiz, first base coach for the Rangers. The hitters want to see the breaking ball up in the zone that Martin just saw. And he did foul it, but the one that Andrew swung at, that's the one you don't want to see. So 0 2. Gallo inches off. It's a little bigger lead. And a very close pitch. We've seen that call to strike tonight. It's almost like it was a guaranteed waste pitch, but it wasn't. Sometimes 0 and 2, 3 and 0, 
kind of automatics. One's a ball, one's a strike. Had the plate. Jim Wolf has called it as far as the height. Runner goes, swing and a miss. Votes throw to second base is a little bit late. So it's going to be a strikeout and a stolen base for Gallo. The Kansas City Athletics host the Kansas City Roars as we turn back the clock to 1965. Saturday, June the 27th, the then KCS Ace Club featured Bert Campaneris, John Blumen Odom, who will both throw out the game's ceremonial first pitches. 20,000 fans will receive a Charlie O throwback t shirt presented by Ross, which depicts the iconic A's Mule mascot from the 1960s and 70s. So two outs now, runner at second. Gallo gets the Rangers' second stolen base of the night. And now it's Robinson Chirinos. You know, they used to be mule rides. Robinson. <laughs> Charlie, you know, I learned something about the mule every time we talked about it. I didn't know that. Yeah, when you talk about the horse rides at the, the zoo, the park, you know, and mule rides. So you could ride Charlie you know, up. Petting, riding. Why do I think that wasn't that popular of a thing with the players? Well, you're in Kansas City, and maybe we get Monty Moore to talk about it. Down on the left field corner, they used to have a stable for the mule. Down in the corner. I bet it was a nice stable, too. Oh, air conditioning. Air conditioning. <laughs> That's funny. Need air conditioning for the mule. <laughs> oh, and two to Robinson Chirinos. I'm sure at the Americana Hotel in New York, we had an air conditioned lobby suite. He had a suite. <laughs> Two bedroom suite. <laughs> in the lobby. So, all in two. It's because he was iconic. Yes, <laughs> he was. You read the card appropriately. <laughs> Gray trying to put away Chirinos. And he does. Hard breaking ball. So Sonny Gray gets three strikeouts in the inning, but he gives up the long home run to Moreland. So bottom of the six coming up. Rangers two. He's coming. Good strike out there. The Shields got him in the first batter. And then another strikeout. Good hard slider for Sonny Gray. But the big man, Prince Fielder, lofted one in left field with two outs. That would take the first run. Sonny Gray upset the ball just then in the front. Nick Martinez has been very good. Hard sinker down and in. And for Martinez, as he pitches in the sixth inning, has a two to nothing lead. Find out what's possible with ATT. Call 1 800 pick ATT mobilizing your world. That's a old throwback there, the old jersey. Only on Sundays, though. See, I, I yeah. know my ace history thanks to you, right? Wedding gown white. There you go. That's right, with the off-white pants because we wore them every day. I, I, I've tried to study and learn from <laughs> the master. But my favorite story about that is how the tops were always oh. a little clean. Well, you only wore them 13 times, 13 home Sundays. 
and wore the same white pants every game. So yeah, it was like a sport coat. That's kind of funny. Yeah. I see Charlie was back in Chicago, so he didn't even he, he didn't even notice. Yeah, just Frank Sanchez. So Martinez back to work facing Zopers vote and Butler. He jumps ahead of Zopers one and two. I will say every time a player is traded to the athletics or somehow puts on an A's uniform and puts those white shoes on. Uh -oh. you say man I'm I'm feeling life right now. I got the white shoes on. Only team that wears right. white shoes. That's right. And they, they work perfectly with the uniform whether it's the gold green or white top. Great. Zobers with a shot to right but Chu got a good jump and he hauls it in. One away. Let's take a look at tomorrow's pitching probables. It's brought to you by Chevron. The veteran Giovanni Gallardo saw him earlier this year. And he'll be opposed by Jesse. Similar ERAs. Gallardo's been pitching a little bit better lately. So that'll be tomorrow. Our coverage starts at 6 30 with A's pregame live. And then the ball game, 7 05 first pitch. Fernando Rodriguez starts to throw. So Martinez, that big overhand curve drops in there for a strike to Stephen Vogt. Vogt struggling. He's 0 for his last 14. It's really the first time this year where he's had a tough stretch. He's 0 for his last 14 and 1 for his last 22. In the dirt, in the count one and two. First place Astros lost again. White Sox beat the Astros four to two in Chicago. Also, Don got the win. Keiko got the loss. So the Astros had lost six in a row, Ray. They're struggling for the first time this year. And the Rangers have noted that and oh, yeah. trailing by three entering tonight's game. Carlos Correa, the big prospect, top prospect for the Astros, hit his first major league home run, but it was not enough. Correa, the young shortstop, who was the first pick in the draft in 2012 in the big leagues with the Astros, hasn't tasted a win yet. Well, they wonder how they're going to move players around to make sure that he does find the place to play. He's not going to sit around. He's going to play, and it sounds like Jed Lowry's going to be out for a while yet. Well, that's his position. 2-2 two, two pitch is low and now three and two to vote. All right, here's a telltale sign right now. What does Stephen Vogt get three and two? And with success comes different style of pitching. And when Stephen was an unknown, he was getting pitches to hit. Now they're throwing change-ups, throwing breaking pitches. Good sinker in his last to bat when he grounded out to second. And a fastball with that. Movement away from left handed hitters into right handed hitters, and it's probably Martinez's best pitch. Yep, yeah, and that's the movement. And through five innings, he has eight ground ball outs. And that one way off the plate, so Volt with a one out walk. Fans follow the Athletics all season in 2015 with the MLB.com at bat, the number one. For live baseball at bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, at cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. Maddox coming out, the pitching coach, and for the first time we got action out of the bullpen. Well, on a much slower walk this time for Mike Maddox, unlike when Martinez made the air last inning, opened up what the A's hoped would be a big inning. So 96 pitches, and that's John Edwards, the right-hander, who's just now starting to throw. So the home plate umpire, Jim Wolf, comes out to break up that meeting at the mound. So here's Butler who has walked and grounded a second.
First pitch to Butler is on the inside corner for a strike. But I didn't think it was a strike, but pitchers do not like to have hitters extend their arms. And if you can pitch inside successfully, you're going to have a lot of success. And some guys cannot. Sometimes the ball will venture out towards the middle of the plate. It up and that one off the plate. But if you can pitch inside, you got to be pretty good because that sets up pitches away to a right hander. Laurie would be next. He's trying to string some hits together. And that one's belted to center, hit well, but it's right at Martin. So a couple of line drive outs by the A's here in the bottom of the sixth. And that's when you know things are going right yep, for you. Yep. Runner third, one out, ground ball out. Base is loaded. Two outs, ground ball out. Two line drive outs, one to right, one to center. So here's Lori. Brett Lori has hit home runs the last three against lefties, and those have been all speed pitches. Maybe he can catch up to an off speed pitch from the right hand. Fastball down around the knees for a strike. Good pitch there by Martinez. Across Detwire, the lefty who's just, just been moved to the bullpen now joins Edwards. So lefty and a righty warming up. Martinez looks over. Now he's ready. And that one in the dirt, it scoots away. They'll check to see if it was a swing. It was not. And that will allow Vogt to go to second as the ball rolled all the way over near the A's dugout. So the A's looking for the first hit with the runner in scoring position. And it's not happened tonight so far. Check swing by Brett Laurie, and Serena's could not handle it. Ball in front of him and then bounced away. So it'll be a wild pitch. So the A's trying to get on the board. Still only have one hit. Tina says walked three. Ooh, and a curveball that just floated on the inside part of the plate. And I think it. I think it was saying hit me. <laughs> it was saying hit me, and he started to swing, then started again, and did swing. And slow pitch softball just would not make contact. One two pitch went back to the breaking ball again. Laurie strikes out for the second time. Side retired. Seventh inning coming up. It's the Rangers two and the A's coming.
after the A's take on the Angels, 6.35 p.m. here at the Coliseum. Fans can watch the post-game fireworks show from the outfield grants, but as always, on-field capacity is limited. Get your tickets today at athletics.com slash fireworks. So 2 nothing Rangers lead the A's 7th inning when it's time for change the speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change, tune-up, and repair experts. New pitcher is Fernando Rodriguez. Comes in for appearance number 15. So he takes over for Sonny Gray. And Sonny goes six innings. Pitched well enough to win, but not much offensive support. Gives up two earned runs, a walk, and six strikeouts. So Sonny Gray out, and Fernando Rodriguez in. He'll face Alberto DeShields and Chu. Nine, one, and two. Berto with a fly ball to center and a walk. First pitch, ship it outside. Angels beat the Rays tonight in Florida, 8 to 2. Another home run for Albert Pujols. He's got 16. And in his career, now 536. Right side, nice big hop for Canna. And shovel to Rodriguez. Check this out, Ray. This is why A's fans are great. Watch it. This is back to back foul ball. So this fella grabs it. He looks around. He sees a young A's fan, and he gives it to him, right? That's great. Now, great. now seven, moments later, Ohio, that same Michigan. lady, that young lady, she gets a foul ball, and she gives it to that guy. Is that great or what? <laughs> that is awesome. What well, would be better if that guy moved over and sat next to the other three? That's awesome. So she... She got a gift and she returned the favor and they both ended up with souvenirs. Now that's a number nice 20. Nice job. That's number 20. Can we see the back of the jersey to see if it says Donaldson or Canna? I'm because guessing it's Canna. Yeah, I hope so. Well, you know what? He's going to go home tonight feeling good because he did a good thing. <laughs> he giveth and he takes. He giveth and he receiveth. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So we like that. It's not a big crowd tonight, but it's a friendly crowd. A little over 14,000. Well, he's sitting in that area that you say is foul ball. Is he? Yes, he oh, is. yeah, there he is. Right You're above right. the dugout and the plaza level. That's right. That is. So off a left handed bat. It's foul ball alley. That's it. Good ah. curve, and it's a strike. One and two. Play the carom off the sweets right above. You know, just turn around, let it go off the proxy glass, come right down in your hands. Yeah, that's a hot spot there. If you sit there, you better be ready. One and two to DeShields. Lays off the curve. Drew Pomeran starts to get loose. He's trying desperately to keep this right at a 2 nothing deficit. Setting up inside. And it's right there, strike three call. So two outs. Rodriguez hit the spot. Yes, he did. And he had the right umpire making the call. Jim Wolf inside corner, perfectly now, thrown Maddie, down in the lower part of the strike zone. And I don't know if Fernando two. thought that was the third out as he hopped off the mound. Looked like he was heading towards the dugout. But that's a step where he just took a couple and saw Stephen Volt throw the ball around and said, I'd better stay right here. I think they're going to throw it back to me. Yeah. So seven strikeouts for A's pitchers tonight. And here's Chu. Chu to butt and pulls the bat back, pitches low. That Angels win that we told you, eight to two over the Rays. It stopped the Angels' five game losing streak. So they get back to 500. So they had gone over 500 a decent amount, but then struggling as of late. Shoemaker got the win, Carnes got the loss. 
Well, at New York Yankee Stadium, they had a tough weekend. Yeah. yeah Especially with Garrett Richards gave up seven in the first two innings. Just normally don't see that. Maybe once a year because he's got him last year once and this year, so he's probably finished with that. You know number one's given up. You go to St. Pete. You stay at the Vinoy. You take a day off. You relax. You're ready to play the next day. That's what happened. You know that. <laughs> Nothing's more relaxing than the Vinoy Hotel in St. Pete. <laughs> two and two now to chew. Two and two. Rodriguez looking for a three up, three down inning. And Chu is able to just check his swing and hold up. A good curveball, and Chu struck out Sonny Gray, but definitely no swing on that check one. Did not offer it as he did with Sonny pitching in the third inning. Just with a runner at third and one out. The yeah, pitch is fouled straight back. Well, this game seems like it's about 10 to nothing, but it's actually only two to uh, nothing. No. And that's the A's have just not been able to do anything offensively. So keep them right there and maybe get into the bullpen, which looks like maybe that's going to happen with a ball in the right field and being retrieved. So Fernando will have to wait a moment. Two balls get hard in the right field, and that's a base hit. So a two out single, that's nine hits for the Rangers. All right, we got in depth sports news for the Bay Area fan. Know it all with Sportsnet Central. It's brought to you by Hyundai, and it's coming up tonight at 10 30, and it's on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Tonight's topics all the highlights from our game here Cavs and Warriors, complete game three highlights. Not good news for the Golden State Warriors tonight in Cleveland. So, uh, lots of basketball talk and lots of baseball highlights. So, we got a pitching change. Pomeranz coming in. We'll be back. Number 13. It's the Painters Paint Store. 2 0 Rangers lead as they bat here in the top of the seventh inning. So Bob Melvin wants a left handed pitcher to face Prince Fielder, so he brings in Drew Pomeranz. So Pomeranz, now his fourth appearance out of the bullpen this year, and he's got one job to do, and that's to get Prince Fielder. First pitch slider low. It's Fielders one for three with an RBI single that was in the third inning and it came with two outs. Well, he has a chance to get the Fielder and then he doesn't want to face more of them because he's another lefty in the on deck circle and then another lefty in Gallup. So Pomerantz might be there but this is the big one trying to get back in the dugout 
after just the two out base hit. Simeon has it. He'll take it himself. Steps on the bag side. Retired. Seventh inning stretch coming up from the O.Co. Coliseum. Rangers leading the A's two to nothing. Presented by Sungevity on uh, Saturday, June the 20th, against the Angels, be one of the first 15,000 fans to walk away with a gnome on the Athletics Ace pitcher where the ball really lights up from the solar panels built into the gnome. Get your tickets now by calling 877-493-BALL or visiting athletics.com slash tickets. That's the 20th. Remember the 19th of uh, the fireworks. Second fireworks on June the 19th. That's Friday. So when it's time for change, thanks Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your oil change tune up and repair experts. It's John Edwards. Big tall right hander takes over for Nick Martinez, his seventh appearance. Has not given a run up a run yet. He's had a couple of stints in the big leagues with the Rangers this year. And the first pitch to Canna is down and in. He's about 96 with a good fastball. Okay, so we'll see what they can do with the fastball in that range. Six inning for Martinez, of course, uh, then that turned it over the bullpen as the A's did after Sonny Gray went six innings. Edwards was closing games for Triple A, doing a very good job. Now in the big leagues, made nine appearances in the big leagues last year. So the Rangers hoping that. This young man can settle in. 6'5, 235 pounds. Two on pitch. Canna with a big swing and he fouls it back. So the numbers for Nick Martinez tonight 103 pitches, six shutout innings, and for Martinez, the bounce back start because his last start he gave up seven earned runs in three and a third innings by far the worst start of his career. So he put that start aside and he was good tonight. Two pitch to Canna swinging and a miss and that's a swing of a hitter who was looking for something else right would you agree. Unfortunately and or down in the strike zone and thinking they it's close to be called a strike and not. Now, man, probably more of what you said because maybe thinking slider and that's protects. Can I make contact? Because I'm full. So one out here in the seventh inning, and that'll bring up Sogard. Sogard a ground out and a fly ball to center field. The Mariners beat the Indians tonight, three to two in Cleveland. Elias over Kluber. Carson Smith got the save. Attendance: four people. Eleven thousand. 
<laughs> 425 your attendance and, and every one of them paid, paid. <laughs> every one of them had a TV or radio and you could understand Terry Francona saying why are these fans cheering we're trailing in this game What's going on <laughs> all those monitors in the concourse which <laughs> always had the baseball game on they may have had the the Cavs Warriors game well, we talk about that, but as we have said, if it goes game seven, it will be on a Friday night here, and we've talked about fireworks. Yep. And so, June 19. June 19. The Ace will be playing a home game, fireworks after. So, when is the game back here, assuming the Warriors are going to win the next two? Well, and that, that, that game, that Ace game that night, it, and it, obviously game has six. something to do, it's a 6 30 start. And that has yeah, something to do with the fireworks. But so the eighth game starts at 6:30. And generally, what's been happening is the Cavs Warriors series. They've been starting nine o'clock on the right. East Coast, which would be six o'clock here. That's the way it was tonight. Line drive and a base hit to left field. So Sogard has a one-out single, just the second hit for the A's. Now, how about Game Six? That would be back in the at Oracle, and it's what Tuesday. Game Six is Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. No, game five would be back here at Oracle. Oh, so they don't go two, three, and two. No. They don't. Huh. Game seven here. Okay. Meanwhile, Eric Sogard, nice hit opposite field, and Josh Reddick, remember, went that same direction with a double with one out. Nobody, actually, nobody out leading off the fourth inning could not score, so he's having an opportunity to try to do something against the bullpen of the Rangers. So, I mean, a strikeout and a walk. First pitch is a fastball inside. Yeah, there's that low strike. It's been called all night, so I guess. You can disagree with it. You can argue about it, but Jim Wolf's been consistent calling it both ways. You know, Ray, I, I don't, I don't mind. I'd rather have a low strike called than a high strike. I think. I agree. I, I, I mean, a pitcher would definitely. I think it, I, and I'd rather have an umpire who's. who's Looking for strikes. Yeah, and really, you, you think about the Friday Saturday games in Boston. Graveman? No, Graveman pitch on the Sunday. Sunday. But, but Friday and Saturday and Sunday, strike zone was all different. Yeah. And really, Castillo was struck out in the eighth inning with Graveman pitching, which is a home run, and then they ended up scoring all the runs. So it, it does vary or differ as far as the umpires are concerned. But you always want the low strike. Raymond wasn't getting them up Sunday. And it's a walk. Two on one out for the A's. So four walks by the Rangers. And so Bannister slowly walking to the mound. And he wants the left hander. So we'll be back. Lefty coming in to face Burns.
games and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. So 2 nothing, but the A's got something going. We got two on and one out. Well, this is just bringing Detweiler. And that's a decision for Jeff Bannister of the switch hitter. Billy Burns, he wants to turn about about right handed. He's batted left handed tonight against Martinez and Detweiler. Because he made seven starts and the A's faced him as a starter. And now in the bullpen as a specialist. They have changed a lot in the bullpen of the the Rangers since we last saw them. He went on today to disable us the 15th of May a little bit of a sore shoulder. So now pitching out of the bullpen. Burns is 0 for 3 reached on an air in the fifth. First pitch inside. So John Edwards gets one out gives up a hit and a walk. Gallo the third baseman playing even with the bat. Inside again, and it's 2 and 0. Detweiler started a game against the A's. Got knocked around. Hits it in, and this time the first two pitches uh, inside. And of course, the lefty typically has movement away from the right handers. That's uh, often at least the first two to go inside to Billy Burns. Not really giving him a chance to swing the bat to be aggressive, which he normally is. And that one ripped foul right into the. Far into the A's dugout, up into the seats. Well, the biggest hit, one of the biggest for Billy Burns came in Detroit after A's had loaded the bases. One of the first pitch cleared the bases with a triple. So if he gets the count in his favor, he's aggressive. He's, I guess he considers himself a leadoff hitter in the first at bat. After that, he's in the lineup and this time trying to drive in a run or two. And that one off Chirino's glove and the runners move up. See, there's your location inside of the pitcher completely missed the location. Supposedly inside the pitch is up and away. Look at Chirino's there and then having to reach up. Probably going to be giving up a pass ball. But a wild pitch. They're going on the basis of the direction in which it was supposed to be in Chirino's. A little slow reacting on a pitch up and away, so the A's try once again to take advantage of an opportunity. So the count three and one, and the pitch is hit towards center. Martin in, he's got it, and not tagging up is Sogard. So Sogard went down the line about three, four steps, and then really did not go back to tag up. Well, Martin has a very strong arm. And the A's are down two, but that's a big run. And Billy Burns, I mean, that's wow. Thought he'd tag, and then the fact that he was charging in and, and maybe combined with a strong arm, but still. So we're going to get a pinch hitter for Reddick. It's going to be Fegley. But Bob Melvin wants that right handed bat in there. And, and the A's looking for a big hit. And now Mike Maddox hustling out to talk to his pitcher. Now Reddick, again, the batting average against left handed pitching is not good. It's 120. Well, if you see Bob Melvin's what yeah. he's thinking here yeah. and, and fegley has been swinging a hot yeah. bat. He had a good series in Boston. But I think one thing that Josh Reddick thinks about is that the games he has started against tough lefties that he's been in there and faced them and. You know every hitter wants to be put in a position to try to do something and. Bob Melvin like you said he's. Going with a right hander and nobody in the bullpen so that we're not going to bring a right hander in with him making this move. So, so here's Fegley, good batting average at 313. 
And at the first pitch. It's a breaking ball, it stays outside. Fegley was four for seven with three doubles over the weekend at Fenway. So there's the hot bat. Triple to right center. He also had a couple of big hits off of a green monster at Fenway. Triple was at Comerica Park. More action now in the Rangers bullpen as the right hander Tanner Shepard sets up. That's pretty good. Rosin on the right hand, Rosin on the left hand, Rosin on the hit. Ready to go. <laughs> Outside and now it's three and oh. Well, Ben's over the switch into the on deck circle. So if there was a thought of pitching carefully, I don't know that that is the case. I mean, they do have a, a lead. The best pitch is three and oh. He's probably going to be taken all the way, but he's probably going to get a pretty good pitch to hit. And it's in there for a strike. So now it's three and one. So go time for Fegley. If he gets anything good to hit, the tying runs in scoring position. Sogard at third, Simeon at second. Outfield is shallow and pulled slightly toward left center field. 3 1 pitch is hit high in the air, foul, and now a full count. Now Nick Martinez went six very good innings, gave up just one hit. And John Edwards got one out, but put a couple of runners on. Now Detweiler. Trying to get out of the top of the seventh, or get out of the bottom of the seventh, excuse me. Three two pitch, and it's foul back. Good pitch by Detweiler, 95, and it was in on the hands of Fegley. And Fegley did a nice job yeah. to foul it off. Same pitch that he tried to throw inside to Billy Burns, missed both times. This time, though, caught the plate, and good job protecting by Fegley. Is well, you have to recognize the pitch inside if it's a strike. Cannot take it close because the umpire is looking right down the barrel. Right there for Jim Wolf. Another foul ball right side. Fig League digs back in. Two fastballs on the three and two actually from the three oh four consecutive fastballs. Setting up outside and he got him swinging. Chased the ball and the A's do not score. So the A's now 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. We're headed to the eighth inning. Two nothing Rangers.
know your team can collaborate at a whole new level with video walls from Prism. Learn how at Prism.com. Reach the eighth inning here at the Coliseum with the Rangers leading two to nothing. So the A's are catching this Rangers team at a tough time. A tough time for the A's because the Rangers are, are red hot. And they have a chance to pick up a game on the first place Astros who lost. Steven Vogt is now at first base. And Mark Canna goes out to right field. And Josh Fegley, who pinch hit for Reddick, stays in the game behind the plate. So Reddick is out. Pomeran stays in. As he faces Mitch Moreland. Here's Fegley. Mitch Moreland has struck out, hit a fly ball to left field, and then hit a long home run to center field. Slider and a strike, 0 and 2. Boy, it seems so unbelievable that at this time of the year, the A's have been through a tough stretch already this year where they could not get a hit with a run in small position. And tonight, once again, Still looking for the big hit. And that one right on the outside corner. So a quick at bat for Moreland that ends in a strikeout. Steven Vogt with the follow through. That was on the left hand, the wrist. And then how about one off his mask? And Steven, go to first base. And be careful. Fagley. Stays there. And this is smart. This is the eighth inning, leaving both catchers in the lineup, and the versatility of vote allows him to stay in. And did he? The Diddy starts to throw, working on that right handed arm. Want to know to Joey Gallo. Gallo is one for three. Couple of ground outs and a single. He also stole the base. That was in the sixth inning. Two zero pitch, and there's that big swing by Gallo. Got that a little bit of an uppercut too. Yeah. Lifts that front leg and does not get cheated. So you can see a hitter who is willing to take a lot of strikeouts yes. but when he makes contact. I thought Jeff Bannister talking to him in this big swing and with him his third baseman, Gallo. But Jeff Bannister said, and I thought it was a good point, he said, hitters don't hit home runs, pitchers throw them. Well, that's probably true. And you know, if you think about it, it's usually a mistake. Yeah. We've talked about mistakes and how they're hit for home runs. And if you go up there thinking about home runs, just like that, you're going to get the hammer. And with the righty do up in Elvis Andrus and then the lefty Martin, the on deck circle, we'll see if Bob Melvin goes to Venditti. Big curveball and a good curveball from Pomerantz. And one thing the manager has said as he leaves Pomerantz in the game, and that is he needs to get some length, get the right handers out, which he's capable of doing. Starting pitcher, he did it. He got a couple of lefties, actually, Fielder, Morlet, and Gallo, three lefties consecutively in the lineup. So now he faces Andrus, who's 0 for 3. Pomerantz trying to retire all four hitters that he has faced. Good curveball and it's a strike. One and one in the outside corner. One of those pitches that maybe comes around the plate a little bit, but a pitcher yep. loves to get it called a strike. That one stays high. Tried it again. So two and one to Anders. Yeah. 
rolls off the glove of Fegley. The Yankees beat the Nationals tonight. So good interleague matchup there. Six to one Tanaka over Scherzer. Stephen Drew had a couple home runs. Bress Harper had a home run. So the Yankees have won seven in a row. It's after the A's beat them yep. three or four. That's right. That is amazing. A little flare. And it gets beyond Sogar and Simeon. And that's a two out single for Elvis Andrews. Well, it worked out well. Now the lefty Martin will face Palmer as the lefty. So the key in this inning was getting Moreland and Gallo. Because Palmer stays in the game, faces the righty. Now the lefty comes in. Uh, up to hit, and that is Leonis Martin. Martin's got a couple of hits. Two singles, a strikeout, and a stolen base for Leonis Martin. And he swings and misses. Tigers beat the Cubs six nothing. Another good interleague matchup. It was Lester, wasn't it? Yeah, Lester got knocked around. Gave up nine hits and five earned runs in four and a third inning. So John Lester is now four and five. Annabelle Sanchez got the win. So the Tigers have won three straight. Sogard flips to second side, retired. So bottom of the eighth coming up from the Coliseum. He's got to get to work. They're trailing two to nothing. Ten and one for the Rangers, 0-2 and 0 for the Athletics. So a quiet night so far offensively for the A's. Nick Martinez with six shutout innings, home run for Moreland, and the A's 0 for 8 now with runners in scoring position. Sonny Gray pitched well, but left trailing two to nothing. So A's have two more shots at it as Ross Detweiler stays in the game. Shepers, the right hander, is ready. So Detweiler will face Zobris, Vote, and then Butler. First pitch is in there for a strike. Then Zobris, the struggling hitter right now. He's 0 for 3 tonight and 0 for his last 18. Good swing there, fouls it straight back. But now he's behind in the count 0 2. Since coming back from the disabled list, Zobrist is six for 41. And that one's belted toward the gap in left center field, but it's oh. off the glove of oh. the Shields, picked up by Martin, and Zobrist with a double. Well, maybe a missed play. Yep. Well, help. He should have had it. Yes, and wow, I think he is just telling the world he should have had it. He should have. And I don't know if he got caught in the lights or what happened, but a hanging curveball. And Zobris hit it well. 
the shield's going after it. Ball is there. The speed, he got it. And, you know, I think he momentarily must have lost the lights because it looked like he looked up, stopped, and then took yeah. off again. He hesitated yep. just a little bit. And just enough of the ball off his glove. Still almost recovered nicely to make a, a play. And I bet he would say that those lights got him. And glove didn't do it. So Zobers gets the double. And here's Vogt. Pitches outside. Steven Vogt is 0 for 2 with the walk. So another opportunity for the A's. They've received four walks tonight. Swing and a miss. Steven Vogt tried to tie this one up. When you think back to last inning when fly ball to center field and no tag and no run scoring and of course, it's a one run game at that point, and this is much different. Still down by two as the A's are. There's a baseball loose out in right field. So Clipper loosening in case the A's grab the lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Weiler's ready to count one and one to vote. Foul straight back. Steven looks like he liked that pitch. Yeah. That was up a little bit. He's asking Jim Wolf. And Jim Wolf said, strike to me. Well, it was up a little, but not a lot. No, it wasn't. That was a little bit above the belt. Both behind in the count one and two. It's blocked by Chirinos. That's yeah, a, a great shot there in the anticipation. That's what a catcher who calls the pitches you anticipate. If you're calling a breaking ball, you're anticipating it breaking like this. Watch him move to his left. That's in anticipation of the ball being exactly where it was thrown. And good job by Chirinos to block it. And you don't want to find yourself reaching in at the last instant because the ball gets on you too quickly. Call the pitch, you know where it's going to be. And there's a little flare to center, and that's a base hit. Our team picks it up. The throw to the plate. Zobris coming home, and Zobris is safe. Wow. He just beat wow. the tag of Torinos, and the A's are on the board. It's two to one. Well, and Jeff Bannister, the manager, is out of the on deck or the uh, warning track. To find out if he was tagged, Jim Wolf had a pretty good look at it. Steve Michelle, bench coach, and Stephen Vogt. Ben Zobers did not get a great jump off second. He wanted to make sure the ball was in, so he hesitated. Then he took off. Martin with a strong arm, and it looks like they're going to challenge it, review it. Then I tell you, Jim Wolf did a good job of moving around. And the only question, if he got him when he followed through, I don't know if you have an angle. Here's the best angle. Missed him there, missed him there. Did he get him there? Missed him there. Looked like he missed him on the backside. He didn't yeah, see it. Tough to tell. Didn't Luther see any it. uniform move. And you would see the backside of the uniform move if he got him, and it didn't. So. I don't think there's anything definitive about tagging him with a swipe tag. Oh, there's a good shot. He missed him completely. He did miss him. That last one might have been it. Yeah. Maybe tough to overturn. Yeah. Well, uh, here's the here's the big look here because he takes the swipe tag at him. He missed him initially, then the follow through. And his hand was up. You know, that's an interesting call, too. Was did he have the ball when he's trying to force Zobris to go around? You know what? I bet they maybe could also be reviewing the positioning of the catcher because Torino's forced Zobris to go around him. And if Zobris had made contact, 
Did he have the ball in in the baseline? Hmm. So they're taking a, a look at it. He's hoping that it's a two to one game. Probably the last hitter for Detweiler. As Shepherds is waiting out in the bullpen. So we may see Jeff Bannister come right back out and make a pitching change. So we're hoping the A's have gotten on the board here in the bottom of the eighth. See, you know, that in that shot there. And here we go. Safe. And he's safe. So it's an RBI hit for vote. And now Bannister is going to come out and make a pitching change. So give vote the RBI single. That wire gives up a run when it's time for change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up. It's your oil change tune up and repair experts. California is brought to you by Toyota, the full-time automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. So Steven Vogt with an RBI single to get the A's on the board. Two to one, nobody out. Now the new pitcher, Tanner Shepherds, faces Billy Butler. Shepherds comes in. 2 0 with a high ERA of five and a half. Butler is 0 for 2 with a walk and hits a one hopper. Gallo with a nice play out at second, and that's a double play. So Joey Gallo handled a tough hop, and Alberto made a nice turn at second base. So just like that. Two outs here in the eighth. Well, the ball running in on Billy Butler in the crack of the bat. Well, in hindsight, with that throw going to the plate. And Chirino's making the play at the plate. And nice to see Stephen Vogt continue to second base and be there with the throw going yep. to home plate on the base hit up the middle. And that double play would never have occurred. So two away for Lori, who is 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts facing Shepherds. Been an eventful year for Shepherds. He opened the season on the disabled list with a bad ankle. And then when he did come off the disabled list, he was not very good. So he went to, to the minor leagues and then brought back. He's not in the minor leagues a real long time. Was brought back. Now trying to figure it out in the big leagues. It wasn't that long ago, Ray. This guy was yeah, was really, really good coming out of the bullpen for the Rangers, but 
Well, one of the, the many Rangers who both started and relieved. Uh, bigger than Natalia Feliz, who is rehabbing himself. In 2013, Tanner Shepherds was 6 and 2 with a 1.88 ERA, and he pitched in 76 games. But injured last year and trying to figure it out this year. But he was quite a setup man. Lefty Sam Freeman now listening up. But you're right, Ray. The last time we saw the Rangers, it's almost like they have a completely different bullpen. 2 2 pitch, a little bit outside, 96 miles an hour. So full count to Lori. Call Lori knew it, so Lori strikes out for the third time. A's get a run on the Zobras double and the vote single two to one after eight. Hey, if you're looking for the best coverage of Oakland A's baseball, log on to CSNCalifornia.com as our A's insider Joe Stiglitz provides wire-to-wire -wire reporting of this 2015 A's season with breaking news, video, special features, and more. Check Joe out at CSNCalifornia.com. little activity down at Jack London Square. Some people heading in to watch the rest of this A's game. Maybe disappointed in the outcome of the Warrior game. The Warriors lost game three tonight to LeBron James and the Cavs. So Pat Vendetti comes in for his third big league appearance when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and repair expert. So Vendetti had quite a weekend, a weekend to remember certainly, pitching twice at Fenway Park. He pitched on Friday and he pitched on Sunday. And <laughs> nice. That's fancy. Teddy V. But it is a play by Fegley. Just like my partner used to do it. Listen, that, it's not easy to do, especially with a bond and just react that quickly. And Fegley, I mean, he's starting to go out in front of the plate with the bond, which would be fair ball. Instead, he sees it and reacts. Quickly bounces Alabama, back and takes it Hunter, in the catcher's mid and Jim Wolf right there on top of a great play. So nicely done by Fegley and here's Alberto outside corner strike. Hanser Alberto's got a hit tonight. He's one for three. That one's got a little spin to it. But Vogt takes care of it for the second out. 
Now Friday night major league debut at Fenway Park and. He did a great job. Ground ball. To Canada. And then he switched around to right hand and got Mike Napoli. Double play. And Blake Swinehart. He initially said he's going to throw left. He said no nope, I'm going to go right handed and. Faced him and got the strikeout. So Pat Menditti. Jerry Fraley who's a beat writer for the Rangers asked. Jeff Bannister he said now in the bullpen of the range of the athletics have three lefties and four righties now does that mean now they have four lefties and five righties? I think it's <laughs> I think it's three and a half and four and a half <laughs> is probably the best way to have it. But Jeff Bannister said I'm looking forward to seeing him. He says I just hope my guys don't get messed up. But so far if this right hitter gets on base he will turn around and throw left handed. That one's hit in the air shallow left. Zobras hustling in goes into a slide and he makes the catch. So he won't pitch left handed to two. Doesn't need to. Yep. So Pat Venditti with a three up three down inning. So we're going to the bottom of the ninth. It'll be Canna, Sogard and Simeon. A's trailing by one. you join us tomorrow for game two of this series. Our coverage starts at 6.30 here at Comcast Sportsnet California. Giovanni Gallardo against Jesse Hahn. Couple of right-handers. Gallardo with five wins, Hahn with three. It all starts with A's pregame live again at 6.30. And remember, you get complete A's coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSN California. Home of A's baseball is Comcast Sportsnet. Right fielder. Good fans in right field. Canada. Trying to get it going. A's do not have a walk-off win this year, Ray. That's not like the A's. And Pat Vendetti doesn't have a win. So hey, that's a spoiled. nice combo, huh? Got spoiled this couple of years. So Sean Tollison, who right now is the closer, and he is seven for seven in save opportunities. Before this year, he's never had a save. That's amazing. So he was good out of the bullpen last year, and now he's closing. For, for now, and Tommy Foley's on the same list. So Canna, Sogard, Simeon, the three scheduled hitters, and there's a fastball first strike, 94 miles an hour. Canna tonight has grounded out. He's been hit by a pitch and he has struck out. He's with four hits. They stranded eight through eight innings outside with another fastball at 94. He's had just one hit through the first six innings. Finally broke through in the eighth. One pitch is belted to right field. Chu is back. He was playing deep, and he's right at the warning track, and he makes the catch. 
Talk about no doubles. If Nelson Cruz had played there against the Cardinals in the World Series, the Rangers have been world champs. Two, listen. Ball may have been out of the strike zone, but two was about three steps for the warning track. And with the ball on the warning track, really hardly had to go back. And that's the difference in positioning. Did not want to give up a double, did not. So here's Sogard with one out. And the first pitch right in there for a strike. Sogard has a base hit that was in the seventh inning, a one out hit. He's had a couple of runners on in the seventh, but could not score. But inside, so it's been Martinez, Edwards, Detweiler, Shepherds, and now Tolleson. Shepherds did a good job in the eighth, got the big double play from Butler. Right there for a strike, 94 miles an hour, one and two. Ahead in the count. Grounded right to Gallo, who scoops it up. And that's the second out. So Tollison took a little off, and it sounded like Sogard got that one down off the end of the bat. So two outs. A's need to string together a couple hits here. They, as we've come to admire about the athletics, they always seem to make it interesting in the ninth inning. So here's Simeon who has walked twice and struck out. And the curveball drops low. Allison trying to save it for Nick Martinez. On the outside corner with a fastball again sitting right at 94 miles an hour. <laughs> Seen that breaking ball too much from Tolleson, but there it was. But he's got the fastball as you pointed out to 94 miles per hour and then figure it behind in the count. I'm going to go throw the fastball, which he's got a little bit of a hump in his delivery right there. And throws. And there's a base hit to right field. Simeon reached for it, hit it off the end of the bat. And the A's are still alive. Sometimes it helps to think that he's going to get a fastball. He does outside part of the plate and to be able to stand off the plate and take the base hit to right field. Now batting center fielder, number one, Billy Burns. Now the outfield, not in a no double situation, and Billy Burns, a few more gaps open in the outfield, and maybe trying to hit one of them. Fifth at bat for Burns, he does not have a hit, so his 12-game hitting streak is on the line. would be next. And Burns got a change up and it was up a little bit and fouled it straight back. I don't think we're surprised to see that. Started this way and it's kind of floated after it. So all in one to Burns. He did reach in the fifth inning. He reached out an air. Gallo in, corner outfielders in, and there's strike two. Another changeup. Yep. This time he couldn't pull the trigger. Started to swing, held up, and maybe a, a half swing or a check swing. Bad swing. <laughs> <laughs> Full swing. <laughs> so the 0 2 pitch, and he went uh, back to the same pitch. That's right. So three in a row. 
Bigger slap hitter. He's going to have to slap a changeup. Simeon is the tying run. He's got good speed at first. And this one's popped up, and this is going to do it. Moreland is under it, and he makes the catch, and that's the ball game. So the Rangers take game one of the series, and the A's have now lost four in a row, and they are 23 and 37. Martinez, the winner and Gray the loser. It took three hours to play in front of 14,617. Final score, it's the Texas Rangers two and the Oakland A's one. You've been watching A's Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California. Don't go away. A's Post Game Live with Brody Brazil and Carney Lansford starts right now.